now that you have a reasonable idea of Cordova and NG Cordova, your obvious next question is, how do I make use of it within my Ionic application? Now, what better way than to look at an example of how you can make use of Cordova and NG Cordova within your Ionic application? And the first simple example that I could think of was to customize our splash screen for our application. Now, you all have seen that when you use mobile applications, typically a temporary graphic screen comes up on your device, persists on the screen for a short while and then disappears and then leads you to your home page or uh, your um, application. Now, this is what we refer to as the splash screen. It temporarily comes up on the screen and then perhaps it might display a logo of your application. It might display some other additional information. It might even display some um, spinners just to show that something is going on in the background. And then finally, it gets dismissed and then you land into your application. You have seen this kind of approach being used by many mobile applications. Now, one of the reasons that mobile applications use the splash screen is to hide the fact that behind the scenes, they may be communicating with a server, fetching data and setting up things along the way before they let you into the application to see the data. So they might have to do some amount of background bookkeeping before they let you into the application. And a splash screen is a nice way of hiding this work going on in the background and still keeping you informed that something is going on to set up the application for you. And splash screens are used almost by most of the applications these days. Of course, there are people that say that splash screens are evil. By all means, there is always two sides to every coin. To me, splash screens are interesting to look at as long as they can be dismissed within a short period of time and they don't keep me from accessing my mobile application within a few seconds. A few seconds is more than enough to get everything set up to let you access your application. So this temporary thing that comes up on your screen, the splash screen, is what we're going to look at next. How do we set up a splash screen for our Ionic application? How do we show it and dismiss it? Is there a way that we can access it? Now, the splash screen support in Ionic comes through the Cordova's splash screen support. So it takes the help of Cordova's support for splash screens. Ionic has its own few things that it does in order to enable the use of splash screen with your application and we will look at that next. So as I mentioned earlier, the splash screen is supported in Ionic through the Cordova splash screen plugin. Now the Cordova splash screen plugin enables you to control the duration for which you show the splash screen. And also you can customize the splash screen. You can build your own custom splash screen. Indeed, both of these features, we are going to uh, uh, use them in the hands-on exercise next. So hold on until then to learn how this is actually achieved using the Cordova Splash Screen plugin. But let's now see how we make use of this splash screen within our application. You do realize that your mobile application may be run on mobile devices with vastly different capabilities. Mobile devices of different screen sizes, mo mobile devices of different screen resolutions, mobile devices of different capabilities, different platforms, and so on. So one single splash screen does not fit all these devices. Now, fortunately, Ionic provides you with a nice way of taking one single image and from that, develop and build up splash screen resources targeting various platform 
sizes. So all that you need to do in order to use splash screen, along the way, we'll also see how we develop icons, uh, custom icons for your application. So both icons and splash screens, the idea is still the same. Now, what you need to do is you need to design your icon as a graphic, and you also need to design your splash screen as a graphic. It could be a PNG file, it could be a um, uh, PSD file, or an AI file that you provide, which then Ionic can transform into files of different sizes targeting different platforms. So this is where Ionic provides a tool, command line tool called Ionic Resources. So how do we make use of that? We will do that in our hands-on exercise that follows this particular lecture. There you will get to understand how you do it in practice. But this Ionic Resources tool enables you to supply just one single uh, image corresponding to a splash screen and one single image corresponding to an icon. These images for the icon, it should be about 1024 by 1024 pixels. For the splash screen, it should be 2208 by 2208 pixels in size. From that, if you run the Ionic Resources command, it will automatically generate splash screens of different screen sizes. Now, where do, where do these exist? That uh, I'll show you in a few moments the uh, folder where this splash screen resources exist. If you go to your applications folder, the confusion folder, you would see that there is a folder there named resources. If you go into the resources folder, you would see that there would be two um, resources there, one called splash.png. In my example, I am using PNG files for splash and icon. You can also supply the Photoshop PSD files or AI files for this purpose. Now, so in my case, I am using PNG files. So I have a splash.png and icon.png. So these are the master files. And then when I run Ionic Resources command, this will automatically generate files of different sizes targeting different screen uh, densities and different screen sizes. Now, if you go into the Android folder in here, you would see that there are splash screens here. They're exactly the same um, image, but at different screen resolutions, different screen sizes, targeting mobile devices of different screen resolutions and screen sizes. Similarly, if you go to the iOS folder also and in the splash subfolder, you will see the same thing. We will look at them one more time when we go to the exercise next. Now that we have seen how we can build up all the splash screen or icon resources, how do we actually make use of them? So this is where Ionic takes the help of the Cordova's plugin called as Splash Screen. How do we use Cordova plugins within our Ionic application? If you were using Cordova plugins in general, you would install the Cordova plugins within your application by saying Cordova plugin add, and then you will give the details of the plugin. Now, the details varies depending on how you are installing the plugin. You might supply the name of a plugin. You might supply a uh, GitHub repository from which you fetch this information. You might supply other ways of specifying the pl plugin. We will see two or three different ways in the exercises that, that uh, you're going to do in this particular module. You'll understand many different ways of specifying a plugin. Now, so if you were using Cordova by itself, you would say Cordova plugin add and then give the details of the plugin. With Ionic, the same command, you would execute it as Ionic plugin add and then the details of the Cordova plugin. The reason we use Ionic rather than Cordova is that Ionic does a little bit of extra work that is required for 
supporting your plugins. When you execute the same thing as Ionic plugin add, then some of the information will be saved into the package.json file. And then later on, it will be useful for uh, developing, the, uh, for maintaining the state of your application and so on for your Ionic application. So that's the reason why we are using Ionic plugin add in our exercises that we you will see later on in this module instead of Cordova plugin add and the name of the plugin. Now, once you have the Cordova plugin, we already saw that ng Cordova provides the corresponding angular wrappers around it. Let's look at the wrapper for the splash screen plugin. Now, if you are using the uh, ng Cordova wrapper within your code, you would uh, identify this by saying dollar Cordova splash screen. Now, this is the corresponding ng Cordova service that supports this plugin. You will be injecting this service into your application wherever you're going to make use of the Cordova splash screen. And this plugin has certain methods. It has the show method and the hide method. Typically with splash screens, even before your application is ready, your splash screen needs to be shown. So actually we rarely call the show method of the splash screen plugin. Instead, we would be calling the hide method when we want to hide the splash screen. Any Ionic uh, or Cordova plugin that you're going to call, it should always be called inside this method called Ionic Platform Ready and Function. The reason why we use this Ionic Platform Ready is that this ensures that the underlying platform is ready for handling this. Now, when Cordova needs to handle the plugin, Cordova first has to be loaded in and start and get everything ready for your application to be able to access through Cordova the native capabilities of your device. By calling this function called Ionic Platform Ready with supplying the function, what you are specifying to your uh, application is that when the underlying platform is ready, then this function should be executed. So that's what you're specifying by using Ionic Platform Ready. So anytime you call any of the Cordova plugin methods, you should be enclosing them inside this Ionic Platform Ready function um, in there as shown in this example. So with that little background, we are going to go to our first hands-on exercise. Many of the concepts and questions that you just examined, we're gonna actually make use of within the hands-on exercise and then fully understand how each of these things play a role in allowing your Ionic application to run on your native device. So in the next exercise, we're going to customize the splash screen of your Ionic application. We'll also control the display of the splash screen using the Cordova plugin support for our splash screen.